Hi everyone, and welcome to Eric's Electronics Workbench and part two of the Simpson 260 meter troubleshooting. Now if you haven't seen part one, I'll post a link to that video below this video in the description. You definitely want to check that out. So some additional components have arrived. Let's continue with the repair. So continuing on with the Simpson 260 meter repair, when I left off in part one, I was testing these multiplier resistors and I found that R14 and R15 had drifted way out of spec. So R14 is supposed to be 4 meg ohms and R15 is supposed to be 15 meg ohms and R15 is a 1 watt resistor, R14 is a half watt resistor. There's no wattage mentioned next to R14 and the note down here says that when there's no wattage it's half watt and all of these are 1% tolerance resistors. So again when I left off in part 1 I didn't have those values on hand so they needed to be ordered in. So just taking a quick look right here, this resistor should be 4 meg ohms and we can see it's 4.8. 352 meg ohms, so 1% of 4 million is 40,000, so again that's way, way high. And this should be 15 meg ohms over here, and 15.6566, right around there. And 1% of 15 million is 150,000, so again that has drifted way too high. So for the replacements, what I found at Mauser Electronics is right here. For the 4 million ohm resistor, no problem at all. They had the 4 million ohm resistors in stock. So that'll be an easy replacement, just one of these. And measure across there, perfect. So 4.00, big improvement there. So these resistors are actually, even though they look a lot smaller than the original, um, these are half watt and they're 0.1% tolerance. So greatly improved on the tolerance specifications. So nothing wrong with that. But that size, it's amazing, that's a half watt resistor, and you can see by this original one right there, it'll easily fit in place, but uh, definitely a lot smaller modern technology on those. Now, for the 15 million ohm resistor right here, I could not find a 15 million ohm resistor. Um, they did actually have them as a surface mount, but they didn't have any through hole. So if we take a look right here, across there, you can see that is a 5 mega ohm, so 4.99. So what I'm going to do is put three of these in series and that'll add up to the 15 mega ohms that we need. And these are actually 1 watt resistors and they're 1% tolerance. So same tolerance specification as the original and the same wattage rating. So they'll be a perfect replacement. Uh, and it looks like three of them in series will fit right across there. I'll just solder them very, very close together. Um, cut the leads nice and short, just back to back. And uh, from end to end, it looks like three will stack in there and that'll give us the resistance value that we need. It should work very well. Now, to remove this board, what you need to do on these meters is there's a little screw right there and right there and then these, uh, that little nut that's on the stud there and there. So you remove those pieces of the hardware and this board is able to be removed. And there's also a battery clip right here. You need to remove that. And the board can be tipped over to the side and that'll give access to the bottom because when I did these resistors in part one, I was able to reach right here and make the solder connection. Uh, but I can't do that here, you know, so I'm going to have to move the board over to the side. So I will continue with that. And uh, when I have things disassembled, I'll show you uh, inside the meter, you know, on the back side of that board and I'll get those new resistors installed. All right, I have the circuit board removed, so I have access to the back of the board. And other than the hardware that I mentioned you have to remove, there's a uh, knob on this shaft for this potentiometer for the ohm zero adjust, and you just remove that knob. The two knobs on these shafts for the rotary switches don't need to be removed. These shafts just pull straight out of those switches, so removing this board is really pretty straightforward. Now I noticed something that kind of unusual going on with these uh, multiplier resistors right here for the high voltage input jack. So there's a 5,000 volt AC and 5,000 volt DC input and then these resistors basically are dropping that voltage down and they're very, very high value resistors. So if we look at the schematic, you can see on uh, DC 5,000 volts, it should be an 80 mega ohm resistor, two watt rating, and the AC 5,000 volts is a 20.2 uh, mega ohm, two watt resistor. Now, if we look down here, first of all, tip this up a little bit here, you can see this jack right here is DC 5,000 volt and that's AC 5,000 volt. So just remembering that position of those two front panel jacks. If I go across the, uh, well, all the resistors have a common tie point back here, so I start there. If I go across the DC 80 mega ohm resistor, so DC 5,000 volt range, 
can see 79.7 .7 mega ohms, so very close to that 80 mega ohm value, so really don't see any issues with that. But there's another resistor that's been added in series. You can see this sort of orange colored resistor right there, and that looks like the type of resistor that was used elsewhere in the meter, so you know it does have a factory uh, sort of original look to it. If I go across that resistor, see we get 4.1 mega ohms. So that may have been a 4 mega ohm resistor, maybe it's drifted up a little bit in value. I can't actually see any markings on it for the actual value. I think the value is actually facing downward, but that would uh, give us 84 mega ohms across there when it's only supposed to be 80 mega ohms. So I'm not sure why this resistor was added in. If it was done at the factory sort of to calibrate something, I'm not really sure, or did someone add that in later on? Um, but if we find that the uh, 5000 volt range is way out of spec or is not reading correctly, we'll have to remember that this resistor is in here. I'm going to leave it alone for now because I don't really know why that was added, but it definitely doesn't match the schematic. Now, the other resistor should be, uh, I think that was showing, uh, yep, 20.2 mega ohms on the schematic and we're seeing uh, about 20.7 mega ohms. So a little bit higher, but really not a problem. I'm not going to worry about that. Honestly, the 5,000 volt ranges on this meter probably won't see a lot of use. Personally, I really wouldn't be using them for 5,000 volt. If I was going to take that kind of reading, you know, with high voltage, I have a high voltage probe that I would use anyways. So these probably won't see that much use for the really high, extreme high voltages. I do have a power supply that will go to uh, 1,000 volts DC, so we can check that range uh, up to 1,000 volts and see if there's reasonable accuracy on it. Interesting that this resistor was added in here, and I don't really know why. So I'll continue with replacing the resistors that I talked about on this board, and then I'll be back when I have that part done. Okay, the resistors are installed, so a little 4 mega ohm resistor right there, and the 15 mega ohm resistor made up of these three individual 5 mega ohm resistors in series, right across here. I left these standing off the board just slightly because there's two traces that have to pass underneath those resistors, so no issue whatsoever just leaving those stand off the board. Definitely don't want that shorting out. So let's take a reading right across this resistor just to verify. And it looks like, yep, there it is, 4 mega ohms, 3.998999. So very good. Let's make sure this is 15 mega ohms across here. And it is 14.98. Looks very good, so no issues with that. So now let me just set the meter back in the case here. So let's take the uh, resistance measurement across the input jacks and verify that the resistance values are looking correct. So again, this is 20,000 ohms per volt, so you take 20,000 and multiply it by the voltage ranges and that gives you the resistance that you should see across the input jacks. So starting on 5,000 volts, common over to 5,000, we should see 100 mega ohms, all right, 100 million ohms. So if we go from common to there, so we actually see 103 mega ohms, all right, so that's in gig ohms on the display, so 0.103, it's 103 mega ohms, and it's not surprising that that is up by oh, almost uh, 104 mega ohms there. But that matches that resistor that we saw that was added, that was in series, um, that we just took a look at. So uh, again, I'm not sure why that resistor was in, you know, installed because it looks like that could be affecting the accuracy. So if the uh, 5,000 volt range is reading low, then that resistor really needs to be removed. So we'll take a closer look at that when I hook up some voltage to the meter. But uh, if that extra resistor wasn't in there, then this would be very, very close to that 100 uh, mega ohms because it's basically up by uh, about 3.8 mega ohms high. So uh, moving on to the 1,000 volt range, so 1,000 uh, times 20,000 is, of course, 20 million. So going across these jacks right here, we should see 20 mega ohms. And yes, we do. That looks very good. So 19.97, some change there. So no problem with that. So that was reading high before, so that looks like that's come back into spec. So 250 times uh, 20,000 is 5 mega ohms. So across here. Hey, look at that. Spot on. That looks really good. So again, that was high, and that's now returned back to where it should be. So those ranges really should be very accurate now. Uh, 50 volts, just double check that. Should be 1 mega ohm, and yes it is. No problem there. So 10 volt range. So that should be uh, 200 K ohms and it's just a little bit high. I don't think that'll be a problem. I don't think that'll be affecting the accuracy, 202 K. But we'll double check that. And the 2.5 volt range. 
so it should be 50k ohms and just a touch high 50.3k ohms but again I don't think that'll be enough to affect the accuracy so um, we'll double check that again when I hook up the voltage calibrator and I'll zoom you in real close to the uh, dial up here so we can see exactly where this is reading with the various voltages and uh, when I get everything connected I'll return and let's see if the accuracy has returned on the DC ranges as I mentioned in the uh, part one video the AC ranges and all the other functions on the meter are working correctly. It was only the DC ranges that had some uh, issues. So it looks like these multiplier resistors were really drifting out of spec. So I'll be back as soon as I get some connections made, and we'll see if this uh, repair is wrapped up or if there's anything else that the meter needs to have done to it. Alright, let's check the accuracy of the DC voltage ranges on the Simpson 260. So I had the output from my power supply on these test leads. They're plugged into the meter and then piggyback on those test leads as this other set of leads coming over to my key site uh, 34465A. So you can just use this meter to verify what we're reading here, make sure the, the accuracy is correct. So I'll start on the lowest uh, input range and then work up to the highest input. So the lowest input is actually on the 50 microamp input, which is a full scale of 250 millivolts DC. So we have 100 millivolts right now, and you can see it is reading right on the 100 millivolt tick mark. So it's that top scale, 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250. So spot on, looks very, very good. No problems there. So I'll move this lead over here. And we'll go down to the 2.5 volt range. So for the rest of the ranges, the inputs are right here and then for the 5000 range this input will get moved over to here so on two and a half volts let me go to one volt input all right there's one volt and that looks very good so again on the top range that's two and a half volts that'd be two one and a half and one no problems there so let's go to the 10 volt range and I will go to five volts Okay, there's our 5 volts, and it is reading exactly mid-scales, that's what we'd expect, because 10 volts full scale, 5 is right in the middle, no problems there, that looks fine. Let's go to 50 volts, and I will set this to 25. All right, there's a 25 volts, 24 999s, and perfect, it's right in the middle. So that was one of the ranges that had uh, the uh, new resistor installed, and uh, no problems at all, looks very, very accurate. Let's try 250 volts. So for 250 volts, my uh, power supply stops at 100 volts, so we'll just go to that maximum. Alright, so there's 100 volts, 99, all 9's right there, and that looks really good, so 250, 250 full scale, 200, 150, and 100. So it's right on. Again, this is where the multiplier resistor was just repaired, so that range has come back into the accuracy that we'd want to see. That looks perfect. Alright, so if we go down to this range here, now I can go to another power supply that can go up to 1000 volts, and we can get some uh, further deflection here, but uh, for right now at 100 volts input, let's see if this looks reasonable. So if we're on 1,000 volts, that would be on the bottom scale. We have 1,000, 800, 6, 400, 200, and 100, and it's halfway. So very reasonable, no problems there. Let me switch this over to the other power supply. I'll do that, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, I have the test leads connected over to my high voltage DC power supply. Now, if you're following along, you're absolutely doing so at your own risk. When you're working with elevated high voltages like this, there are absolutely no second chances. You need to know what you're doing. Very, very dangerous. So take care and be safe. And again, if you're following along, you're doing so absolutely at your own risk. So you can see it is set to 500 volts, and we're getting exactly 500 volts on the Simpson 260. So uh, it would be the... Um, 1000 volt scale is red down here, so we have 0, that's 200, 400, 600, 800, and 1000, and of course halfway is right at 500. And that's one of the ranges that had the, the uh, new multiplier resistors installed where it had that 15 mega ohm, and then I made that out of the three individual 5 mega ohm resistors. So that accuracy is spot on. That looks really, really good now. So the final test will be on the DC 5000 volt range, so let me shut off that power supply and move some test leads around, and I'll be back. 
All right, I have the high voltage power supply set to its maximum at 1,000 volts. You can see we're getting 1,000 volts right there. And the reading on this meter is under the 1,000 volt mark by just a little bit. Not surprising because it had that extra resistor added in addition to that very high value um, 80 megohm multiplier resistor. So my suspicion is that that resistor shouldn't be there. So I think I should take that resistor out and then see if this accuracy improves because it's reading just a little bit low. Let me get you zoomed in. You could actually see that a little bit better. Or the camera movement here. So you can probably see right there, it's just under that tick mark. So the thousand would be right there where it says 10. So it'd be at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and so on over to 5,000 full scale. And it's just a little bit under right there. So it'd be nice to know that that accuracy was, you know, where it should be. Again, I don't really expect to be using that 5,000 volt input all that much, but uh, again, the accuracy could be improved on, and I don't, really don't know why that resistor would have been added. So let me uh, open up the meter again, and I will just remove that uh, extra resistor, and I'll put a, just a straight piece of wire in place, and uh, I'll show you that uh, modification or that change, and then we'll do this reading one more time and see if the accuracy improves to where it's supposed to be. Okay, I removed that extra resistor that was not located on the schematic, and as I suspected, it is a 4 megohm resistor. Actually, see right here, I think it, the marking is, yep, yeah, it's right there. It's also marked as a 5% tolerance. See right there. Now, the other resistors that are in the meter are 1% tolerance resistors, so it really doesn't match in that regard. The way that it looks with that orange color and the style of that resistor certainly looks like some of these other resistors that are located around on the circuit board, but I really think someone added that resistor in there. Maybe they had a high voltage power supply that they were calibrating this meter against and their power supply was off and they didn't know it and they were trying to make the meter read what the power supply was what they thought it was outputting and you know they were trying to compensate so I'm just guessing at that I don't really know why that would have been added so what I did is to bypass where that resistor was installed because when that got installed the uh, lead on this uh, 80 megohm uh, resistor right here was cut short that lead would have come off the end of that resistor and it would have gone you know around to this jack right here it just would have been formed. So I just put a piece of bare jumper wire in. You can see from this jack down into where the lead was cut off down in there. So that'll work very well. No problem with that. Basically doing what the resistor would have done originally. And it won't short out. It doesn't get near anything. There's no danger. So perfectly fine. That'll work very, very well. The end of this a lead that I added, I made a little hook into it so it's mechanically sort of crimped onto the lead that's on the uh, existing, you know, lead coming off of that resistor. And then I soldered that, of course, and then solder connection up here. This is hollow, the uh, other side of this terminal jack right here. This is like a hollow tube, so just had a little hook that comes down and goes inside, filled it back up with solder. So that will work very, very well. So let's put this back together, put a thousand volts to it, and see if the uh, accuracy has returned on the 5,000 volt range. Alright, the high voltage DC power supply is set to a thousand volts, and look at that, it's right on the thousand volt tick mark. So that's looking very, very good at this point. So it's nice to know that that 5,000 volt range is uh, accurate and functioning well now. So you would take the readings at uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 full scale. So exactly where it should be. So the meter is functioning very, very well at this point. All right, so the repairs on this very nice vintage Simpson 260 meter are complete at this point. The meter is functioning very well, and I'm definitely looking forward to putting it to use on the workbench. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're enjoying the videos on this channel, don't forget to subscribe. There'll be many more videos coming up like this in the near future. Lots of repair videos, how-to, tech talk videos, vintage, modern, solid-state vacuum tube, all types of electronics. So you won't want to miss any of that. So again, don't forget to subscribe. So until next time, take care, thanks for watching, and goodbye for now.